All right. So uh, very few questions today. Okay, cool. Well, we'll wrap it up early. It is a holiday week. So I, I completely understand if people are tied up with family or traveling and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it, it makes sense. I, on the other hand, am just nose down, <laughs> head, you know, head down, nose to the grindstone, whatever you want to call it. And uh, been crazy, but we're actually trying to decide on a project management platform. And <laughs> that's taken a lot more time than I expected. But anyway, all right, let's go. So this was a question that was come, came from Facebook regarding uh, several questions in the Google business process checklist. Guys, remember, that is a lead magnet. In other words, that is the exact same checklist that we use, my, my team uses internally for all projects. And so there are essentially checklist items in there that my team knows how to execute and I know how to execute. Uh, and I teach how to execute that stuff in the mastermind. Okay. So when somebody gets the Google business process checklist free as part of like, Hey, here's my checklist. Uh, you know, some of those things that we talk about in, or that are listed in there are perfectly, you know, described or the training is in the mastermind. Um, so I can't just reveal everything in the checklist on a free hump day hangout guys. That just wouldn't be fair to the mastermind members and, wouldn't be fair to me for all the work that I put into that. Uh, so I just want to kind of clarify that to begin with. But, um, <clears throat> you know, because I we're getting a lot of questions about the Google business process checklist. And, um, you know, that's precisely what the mastermind is for. So you can get full on training on how to do everything in the checklist. OK, so I'm going to keep directing you to that. I'm happy to try to answer some of these questions on, on a high level. But the individual details, that is what is behind closed doors. And you have to be a member in order to get that. And so on top of learning how to do it, I will be providing full SOPs so that you can hire a VA or just hand the SOPs to a VA and they can go execute all those tasks. They will, it has the training built right into the SOPs. So you don't even need to train them. You just hand them, hand it to the VA. The only thing you would have to do is potentially customize the SOPs with login details to your specific tools and things like that. So I always I always create two sets of SOPs whenever I'm creating SOPs for the mastermind members. I always do it twice because I have to do it once for my own internal team first, which has all of my login details and everything to the tools that they need throughout the workflow, right? So if they get to a point where they got to log into another tool, then the login details are right there in the workflow, right? Does that make sense? So I then have to recreate the same SOPs that I give to mastermind members, stripping out all of that sensitive data, like account logins and things like that, stuff that is specific to my internal operations. So it, every time I'd create an SOP to share, I have to do it twice. It's an enormous amount of work. And I'm sure you guys are aware of that because if it wasn't such, amount of, uh, such an enormous amount of work, you'd have your own SOPs, <laughs> right? You'd develop your own. So, so you guys, please understand that you know, when I give you a checklist or something like that in a public setting, it is because it's supposed to make things easier on you. But if you want the full training and SOPs, then that's what the mastermind is for. All right. So I just wanted to clarify that up front. All right. So let's get into this. I was reading your GMB checklist and I have some questions. There was a term MREID. How do I find the MREID of the Google business profile? Well, that stands for machine readable entity ID. How do you use the MREID? Well, I can show you how to get it. And how do you use it is, again, that's kind of more advanced stuff that I would only want to talk about behind closed doors. But it is basically the MREID URL that I put in the checklist is what's considered a knowledge panel only URL that references the MREID, the machine readable entity ID. OK, so it creates a SERP landing page. So a Google.com landing page, like, uh, you know, search results page that only shows that brands or that entity's knowledge panel. So it's a Google search results page that shows nothing but the knowledge panel for that brand or that entity. Does that make sense? That's what an MREID is, uh, or at least the URL that I, that I point uh, in the checklist. So let me show you what I mean. <clears throat> if we go in here and we get the um, MREID URL template, which is here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, whoops. I'm going to show you guys how to get this, okay? And what you do with it, again, guys, some of this stuff has to be behind closed doors or else there would be no reason for us to have a mastermind anyway, okay? So this is what the MREID URL looks like. You're, you would replace your company name here. And in this 
ampersand KP, that's knowledge panel only, and KG MID. So this is the knowledge graph machine ID. And this is where you put your MRE ID code. Okay. So <clears throat> give me one second. I got to probably have stuff open in Firefox for client related that I need to close down before I can go into Firefox. So just stand by for a minute, guys. And I certainly did. Okay. Resume share. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go to Google and let's just search for, I don't know. Let me go with my, okay. Here's my tree care HQ agency um, website. So you got to pull, do a, a brand search to pull your knowledge pan or your, you know, knowledge graph. You get, you got to do a brand search or whatever you got to do to pull the knowledge, um, the knowledge panel into the circ results. Okay. Then just click into the map. You could probably do this with your CID URL too, as well. Just go visit the CID URL in the browser. And then once it loads, uh, then you just click up in this white section over by the brand name and click view page source. Once you're on there, you do a control F or, you know, control find, and then you do forward slash G forward slash. Okay. And this is where you find this string of characters, guys. I know it's, if I try to zoom in, it's going to uh, skip where it is in the, uh, so I'm not going to zoom in. I'll do this on the uh, notepad file. But you see where it says forward slash G forward slash, and then there's a string of characters. It's this string of characters. And I believe, I, I always forget this, but I think you take that backslash off the very end or else it'll break it. So this is what you can, is considered your MRE ID right there. Does that make sense? This is your machine readable entity ID, or another one is your knowledge graph machine ID. That's another term for it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this URL for a minute. <clears throat> Paste this in, and I'm going to replace that token at the end of the URL with my copied MREID. Okay. Then I'm going to put my brand name in there where it shows. And again, we just go back to search results. In fact, let me back up, and you'll see how they format the brand name in the. Uh, in this case, there are no um, spaces, but if there was, for every space in the brand name, you would put a plus sign as opposed to a space, right? So in my case, it's just Tree Care HQ. So there we go. So you guys, under, you see that now? Hopefully you all will see that. But that's the difference. This is the template, the URL template. And then you swap out the tokens for the brand name. Uh, you make sure you put plus signs for any plus, uh, spaces, excuse me. And then you put the knowledge panel ID or the knowledge graph ID, excuse me. Another term for that is MRE ID at the end. All right. Now, look what happens when we go visit this URL. All it shows is a SERP with the knowledge panel. Does that make sense? So this is a this is just a great signal here, like for for clicking on that signal because it it you know and it's again a lot of that is not necessarily for link building purposes as it is for if you're doing click through manipulation, right? So clicks on that is a good signal. So that's part of the reason that I use that and I put that in the Google Business uh, website as, um, as well as some other places like the ID page and things like that. So that when I'm sending traffic to those pages and I, like, especially click through, uh, manipulation traffic, so I can direct the bot, like where to click and that kind of stuff. And I can click on those URLs and it's a good signal. Okay. So that's what an MRE ID URL is. All right. How do you use it? Do I have to put it in schema or just use the link for backlink purposes? Yeah. It's not really a backlinking thing. It's more of a, it's an identifier. So like, Posting it on the Google business website is, you know, a, and, and I usually hyperlink it with, um, you know, the brand name. So I'll use a brand name anchor text to link to that MREID URL. And it's really because when Google's bots comes and crawls that the Google business website, as well as like the ID page, which is the other place that I use it, uh, it'll read that URL and it re recognizes that knowledge graph ID or MREID. Does that make sense? So it's more for the bots and for click activity than it is for link building. Like I don't recommend building links to that URL because it's really unnatural. Um, nobody would really do that, but how, you know, so having it, but having it, you know, the brand name hyperlink. So the anchor text is the brand name hyperlink to that. So when the bots come and crawl your branded assets, such as your Google business website or your ID page, and then it, it's just a, it's an additional identifier, right? It's, an, it's another validator for that entity. It's an entity validation mechanism. Does that make sense? So that's what we do use it for. We don't use it for link building. 
Um, I mean, you can test with that. I honestly, I haven't really tested with link building to it um, because it's, it just, who in there, who, who would ever link build to something like that other than SEO? Now, not saying it can't be done. And uh, it, it's, it's actually probably worth a test. Um, but I just haven't done that. I haven't tested it. So I don't know. Okay. And like I said, for me, it's more about an entity validation signal uh, or mechanism than it is uh, anything else. Okay. So do you guys use it in 2021? Because anything I could find about MREID was dated back to 2018 or 2019. You mentioned, um, okay, so that was like a run-on question. That was number three has two questions in, in it, I guess. Um, yes, I still use it or else it wouldn't be in the checklist. Okay. Um, I don't put things in those checklists for no reason, guys. They're there for a reason. Thank you.